Hello there. In this video, we're going to look at three ways of how to evaluate an investment opportunity. Payback period, net present value, and internal rate of return. If you haven't watched my previous video on discount rates and how to discount cash flows, you can check that out at the link given above there. Okay, we're going to start today's lecture with payback period. Okay, consider this timeline with the following cash flows. If you have an investment opportunity which requires you to invest $100 today, which pays you back $45 after a year, $60 after two years, $20 after three years, and $80 after four years. We're going to assume that our discount rate is known and it's 5%. Okay, so what exactly is payback period? Payback period is technically the time required for you to break even, right? So if you invest $100 today, how long it takes for you to recover that $100, okay? For that, we're gonna need to calculate the cumulative cash flows to see what exactly our payback period is. So the cumulative cash flow, okay, right now, it's exactly the same as what we invest. It's our investment. After year one, we get back 45 of the initial 100 investment, right? So I'm gonna, Add the negative 100 to my 45. And for year two, I'm going to just uh, expand the formula there. Okay, we can see that somewhere in the second year, we break even, right? So how do we find exactly when during the second year we break even? My payback period is one year plus at the end of the first year, we still have negative $55, right? So in the second year, I earned $60. So technically I need to be earning 55 out of those $60, right? So the time required for me to earn 55 out of those $60 because, this because I have a negative sign in front of 55, I'm gonna invert that using a negative sign here. And that divided by 60. Okay, so my payback period is 1.92 years. Okay, what we did here is we just added cash flows as we earned them, right? In calculating the payback period, we've ignored the time value of money principle. Remember, we learned that a dollar earned today is worth more than a dollar earned a year later or two years later, right? So in order to take the time value of money into consideration, we need to discount the cash flows before calculating the payback period. Okay, how do we discount our cash flows? Year zero doesn't need any discounting, but for year one, how do we discount this $45? We take the 45, we divide it by one plus the discount rate to the power of the number of time periods later. Okay, I'm gonna block my discount rate so I can just click and drag my formula. Okay, so I've discounted my cash flows depending on when I earn them, right? So now I'm going to find the cumulative discounted cash flows because the formula is essentially the same. I'm going to copy the ones I calculated earlier and I'm going to paste them here. Okay, but because these are not going to be whole numbers, I'm going to show one more decimal probably. Okay, so my discounted payback period, if we look here, I don't break even in my first year, I don't break even in the second year, but I break even at some point during my third year, right? So how do I find that? My discounted payback period is two years, plus I still need to earn $2.7 in my third year to break even, right? Because of the negative sign, I'm gonna say minus 2.7 divided by the amount I earn in my third year, okay? So my discounted payback period is 2.16 years, okay? The next method we're gonna discuss is net present value. The net present value is nothing but the net of the present values of all the cash flows in, the, in that investment or project, right? Okay, because we've already discounted the cash flows here to find the net of all those present values, all we have to do is add them up, right? Okay. 
okay so my net present value for this particular project is 80.37 dollars if you didn't have the discounted cash flows and if you only had the cash flows how do you find the net present value directly excel has an inbuilt function which is npv the first thing you need is the discount rate which is five percent if you look here it starts with value one value two value three there's no uh, provision for value zero the investment right so as it mentions here we're going to start with value one and keep dragging till value four here but we need to subtract our hundred dollars which we are investing right now right so because it already has a negative sign i'm just going to add that at the end of the so you see we get the same when we use the npb function right okay the next method we're going to discuss is internal rate of return irr what exactly is irr is nothing but the return the project offers you how do we calculate irr is using the net, net present value function we equate the discount rate to irr and we force the npv to become zero so irr is technically the discount rate at which the npv is zero okay excel offers a function again to calculate the irr which is irr here it just says values which means you can include also the value at year zero so you start from year zero and you drag it onto okay so my return for this project is 34 percent okay irr has its limitations right so here we have an investment only at year zero if there were investments at some other point in time let's say year two or year three then sometimes you might even get multiple irrs during the calculation process next we are going to compare npv and irr for this comparison we are going to use three projects or investment opportunities with the following cash flows as provided okay we are also going to use two potential investors as an example jack and jill with different discount rates right jack has a discount rate of five percent who and he expects a lower return on his investments jill on the other hand has a discount rate of 12 percent and she expects a high a much higher return as compared to jack okay first i'm going to calculate the irr and npvs for these projects and for those potential investors for these different projects we calculate the irr we just learned earlier we just use the irr function for project x that's my irr I'm basically just gonna copy and paste it for project y and z npv for jack for project x we have to use the discount rate which is five percent right so npv for this for project x would be first the discount rate then the values from year one to four and then we need to subtract the initial hundred dollar investment okay i'm going to highlight the discount rate i'm going to block the cell so i can just again copy and paste the formula there. now for jill who has a higher discount rate how do we find the npv for project x discount rate is 12 percent again cash flows from year one to four and then I subtract the hundred dollars from this. Okay, I'm going to block the cell again for the discount rate. Okay, so now for the three different projects, we see the IRR and the NPVs with regard to the different discount rates. Project X has an IRR of thirty-four percent. Project Y has an IRR of 1.8% and Project Z has an IRR of 10.6%. Okay. NPV for Jack for Project X is 80.37. Why is this positive? Because the IRR of Project X is higher than the discount rate for Jack, which is 5%, right? But Project Y, which, which offers you only 1.8%, is lower than what Jack expects at a minimum, which is 5%. And hence the npv is negative okay and the same argument applies to 
Jill's discount rate, which is 12%. You got Project Z, which has a 10.6% return, which is acceptable for Jack because he expects only 5%, but it's not acceptable for Jill who expects at least 12%. Okay, I've summarized this in the little block shown here. So if your IRR is greater than your discount rate, then your NPV has to be positive, right? If the IRR of the project is exactly equal to your discount rate, your expectations, then the NPV of the project is zero. NPV of zero doesn't mean you don't make any money. It just means that you break even, right? You meet your minimum expectations, which is your discount rate, okay? But at the end of the day, IRR is a percentage and NPV is an absolute value in terms of dollars, right? So how do we really utilize both of them together? Okay, if you look back at the cash flows here, Project Z has a different scale compared to Project X, right? It, it requires a 10 time higher investment as compared to Project X and Y, right? So if Jack has to pick between Projects X, Y, and Z, we eliminated Y already because it offers a return of less than 5%, right? So if Jack has to choose between X and Z, common logic might say, okay, Z offers more in terms of dollars, which is $142, more than is much higher than $80. So Jack should ideally go for Project Z, which is fine, right? If Jack has $1,000 to invest, Jack would obviously choose Project Z. Okay, but consider these examples instead of let's project X, instead of being a standalone project, think of it as a security, as an opportunity to invest. Maybe Jack can buy multiple units of these securities, right? Instead of buying security X just once, if Jack had a thousand dollars, he could probably buy it 10 times, right? In that case, the return he would make would be 10 times $80. He would potentially make $800. Now that becomes more attractive as compared to Project Z, right? So at the end of the day, instead of looking at NPV or IRR as standalone numbers, we look at them together and we use common logic to identify which is a more suitable investment. With this, we conclude session two. We have seen how to calculate the net present value when the cash flows are regular or irregular, it doesn't matter. In the next session, we are going to see simpler ways of calculating the net present value when the cash flows follow a pattern, like an annuity or a perpetuity. Okay. Thank you for watching.